Covering most sports, the Betway odds, but folks, I don't think that anybody should be written off in this matchup. It's Scrawny and Launders to bring you guys the second EU game of the day, and it's already underway as we have Acor peeking down middle on Inferno, to which he sees nothing. You want to replicate land pressure? All you have to do is make it an elimination match and then watch the V2 gladiators in the pit go at it. See the nervousness. This is a match that if it gets close, people will whiff. People will get scared and there will be flubs. It's going to get dirty and I kind of like that. But right now, Asilian trying to time the smoke. Just peeking around the top of Banana, looking for a little bit of contact and he sees it. Most sports not wanting to go all in off of it just yet, but if they had, oh boy, Asilian on his own, CZ in hand. Gonna make sure he keeps that weapon out. Smokes fly over the rotation coming from Mad Lions, but whoa, Mouse Sports not gonna face him on the bomb site. Rather opting to go around construction, and that's just gonna completely unroot him. Shush has been able to get one headshot versus Kerrigan, so we are in the 4v4, but it's this deep CT control because of their variation on the smokes. Ross, he's gonna be playing right next to it, and Mad Lions try to run boost players through. Frozen, he gets himself one headshot, and he's got another couple in front of him, but as he's reloading he is gunned down two versus two even keel once more they see the players in the back of the bomb site and they just have to land their shots but they won't no sports follow through and pick up first pistol that looked like walmart on black friday run boosting through the smoke as soon as the door is opened but what a beautiful split a lot of teams have been playing this one man setup on b trying to have that person delay but if someone gets into ct spawn before your arch rotators made it into ct to help you defend and you've got to fight against construction like we saw you've got to deal with a swarm of t's that are coming your way it's a really strong strap by mouse sports that would be strong versus two players let alone one so good that they won that round even though it came close a couple of whiffs there by frozen i hope he's feeling good because it didn't look like a, a super crispy pistol round by him either way we've got to buy the... here individuals are looking good today launders that that's my fear is this you know this is their last chance we've we've had a couple of hiccups throughout the first few days no more time for that no more margin of error and there are errors being made bubski catching them over top of the smoke with his mp9 this is a five versus three with only that one smg for mad lions i feel the exact same way as you connor i you know you want to make sure everyone's playing in their tip top condition and frozen he's hired guns because of his aim he, first and foremost smart player young great aimer and you want to make sure he's working at his full capacity at all times nice round here from frozen to push through the smoke and this is a 2v4 situation that they're having to fight their way back into they've got the bomb down now smoke comes up shush is pushing in chance there for the deagle one at oranges it seemed to know that rops might be in that corner so pubski can he help him out he definitely got this one rolling. He's the reason they got pressured over into this B site. And Shush with the Deagle oh, needs man. no teammate. Two frags off the cannon. And Mouse Sports fumbling the ball. They open up with that pistol round win, but uh, that's a big three piece from Woxic trying to hang on. He is the reason they got anything in this round because they were denied entirely A. And that post plant fell the way of the Danes. Yo, credit to Shush for getting the first and last kill. But I will say I'm a bit nervous for Mouse Sports looking at this because you've got Woxic uh, bluffing a spray. You've got them taking too much damage on every fight. Drops whiffs there. Wopsic couldn't trade this man who had 30 HP. There was a few moments where you're like, whoa, what is going on here, Mouse Sports? Wake up, guys. This is a, a really important match. And there's no way you should be losing fights like that. Looks like most sports are going to try as well. I mean, we've seen this consistent force buying from them, even falling into question at times. They keep enough money on Chris so that they can ensure the op gets picked up once they decide to buy. Galil for Woxic. One of the individuals who actually, I, I feel, has been struggling in the online realm of Counter-Strike. And that's a worry for most sports because we know just how badass Woxic can be when he is hitting tip-top form. I mean, all his most famous frag highlight videos are from these FPL games, too, just like was pointed out on the desk, so... Ooh, shush. He's got the position on the balcony to cut down the first one, falling downwards and trying to stay alive, but Chris gets him with the Tech-9. Acor close on the smoke with the silent M4 as Frozen 
turning his attention back down middle, catches that B flank, an aggressive decision from Mad Lions to try and corral these T's, both of which are closer to the site. They couldn't find Acor if they tried, though. He has somehow gotten away from the threat and now tucks himself away behind the hay bales. Woxic getting his hands onto the M4. Oh, he walks right into Roy, who had worked his way through Balk after they cleared out that flank. And there you have it. Mad Lions, they do what most sports couldn't. They convert after their first round win. You know that pal uh, that uh, the apartment's door hit is always terrifying to jump off the balcony with a good flash, especially with the pistols, where you can be relatively accurate while you're in the air. You're moving a bit faster. So pretty good for Mad Lions to be able to stop that. Two alive means that, you know, Mad Sports did a good job on that round, but no bomb plant for them. No money here. Chris J has decided to go and grab uh, full armor to, to go with the Deagles. He had a little bit more money than everybody else. Maybe they're foregoing the op option in the next round. But yeah, Mad Lions also look a little bit shaky. Ow. I felt that one. Hmm. Poor Kerrigan. Just kind of, uh, you know, trying to pump up the troops here. Everybody's shoulder to shoulder on the T-ramp. Yeah, Mad Lions not taking, not taking any risks. All the way back. I think Asilian's gonna go drop an HE down there when he feels comfortable enough. Flash comes out and HE off the half wall. Ooh, lands a bit short. And that's gonna be a sign for Mouse Sports to know they're out of HE grenades. Yeah, so don't be surprised if they start to encroach closer and closer. Hell, if they were to sprint through this wildly, could have found timing as the CTs decide to boost, but Roy's gonna stay close here to Asilian, who plays the counter flash. No utility for Mouse Sports. Just again, that one set of Kevlar for Chris. An oddity in this round, but they rotate a third player over just as the T's decide to dry run this. They try and use the element of surprise by just sprinting in. Rop's gonna be able to get two with his Deagle. So something for most sports at least, but that's that. Mad Lions, 3-1 start. That was a little bit disappointing. I thought they were going to more explode into the into the B site, and it felt like they just trinkled in one by one, making it very easy for each player of Mad Lions to deal with it. They made so much progress without getting spotted, and then at the very last bit, when they're all in this death ball, decide to enter ind individually and not give themselves a way to trade. Whatever, we move on from that. We've got now banana down both ways, a push down mid. Bubski starts off this round with a Tempest. There's damage on Kerrigan as well. Trade in though from Rops. And that'll be an okay spot here for Mouse Force. They land slightly on their feet. They get mid control back. They've actually scared Mad Lions into heavily rotating over to the A site. Looks like Rops is gonna make his way in forward as well. Yeah, Rops trying to be the difference maker here. He catches Acor before he could fall back, but the CTs did such a good job of Ooh. leaving B. Awesome 4K coming out of Rops here. Single-handed showing, but still it's in the one versus one. Four frags for Mr. Cool, and it's still not enough. Bubski, ice cold. Comes back around on short, denies Chris J with the headshot. Let it be known, he didn't have a helmet and dies to the single bullet mm. because he bought Kevlar last round. He bought, he bought, yeah, he bought full armor last round. I'm not Kel saying that's the Kevlar reason. It's not the only reason he dies, but uh, hey, man, could have definitely made a difference. Clean as no, ever, Bubski. 11 no, and 2. That's absolutely the main reason. the only reason you always buy head armor on T side is so that you can survive a headshot from an M4 and you didn't have an extra damage. Holy crap! Walks it. Couple of 1 deeks, and they're off to the races again. Why wouldn't you try to entry B? Yeah, yeah, the only question is, could Bubsky stop it once more? He goes for the wild spray through the smoke. He's trying to double back around to the coffins with his teammate. So at least they're able to respond quickly here. But Woxic well equipped and Kerrigan, are you kidding me? Three Deagle headshots out of Mouse Sports. They're a little flustered after that last round, I feel. And so uh, everybody's stepping up when they absolutely had to. They, 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 they absolutely owed Rops this sort of a round. I can't believe Rops ended up getting four kills and they still lost. And he looked, I mean, he was looking like twists yesterday on Inferno today with all the shots that he was hitting. So Mad Lions instant save. Some There's always going to be a round where somebody can do that. We saw that uh, K KNG versus Liquid was able to get those two CZ kills top of Banana. Every once in a while, the second player is extremely vulnerable on a rush like that. If you get the first player off a very nice shot, 
because the other player's in the back throwing grenades, and then that makes the second kill much easier to grab. Here, he waits for the second re-peak as he posts up on the angle, and it's just an amazing reaction there. Oh, also a fantastic shot from Kerrigan. I to ice it out completely. 2v5, you can't even think about the retake. 3v5, they might hang out a bit, see what's going on. So now Mad Lions, they've bought down to zero, but they only have two MP9s in op on Acor at the very minimum because it was saved. But apart from that, just pistols. Oh my. <gasps> if this is a sign of things to come within this series, we are going to have a treat on our hands. I think you were right. You know, you you uh, you hang that elimination over the head of these gladiators, and everybody starts swinging for the fences. Another yeah. wild opening pick, but this time it favors Mad Lions. And Acor, he was pissed, because just a round earlier, we saw him go peeking into alt mid, hit the shot, but gets gunned down by Robs as he tries to run forward. Now, there is that missed boat. CT's trying to hold two more kills to the tally, and what's left of Mouse Sports is now limping in because they don't even have their bomb. Woxic tries to get a kill inside of the smoke, but that's going to just leave Robs 1v5. Once again, all dead in the exact same spot. Take a look at the minimap. All the yellow X's in untradeable. If they all die on the same location, that's because they didn't explode there at the same time. That means that every time someone came to trade, they died on the exact same angle as the last person. They weren't both there and died simultaneously. That would have been a trade in favor of mouse sports. So now, yeah, Rops, kind of the best player on the team these days, has uh, been left in a, in a 1v5, had a round dropped where he got four kills and left a teammate in a 1v1. You know, would have been nice would have been nice to obviously have him up there hopefully helping with the entries, but at the same time he's probably going to be the best player to clutch. So you've got to you've got to hope your teammates can do their job, really. You can't just uh, do everything yourself. And it was an incredible shot from Acor to start that round off though. Chris J in his side of apartments, through the wall. You saw him flirting around with it too. The fact that uh, he was so damaged actually by the tease and still didn't decide to retreat, sticks around long enough to decide he'll take the Hail Mary shot. You know, he was waiting for a confirmed kill. Obviously not ideal oh. to go fishing through the walls, but hey man, he hooks him. It was like a Chris J shot almost. You know, those are the kind of shots that Chris J loves to go for and usually hits. So, a timeout called here for the Mouse Boards. Mouse have lost seven in a row on Inferno and have had five or fewer rounds three times. That is a terrible stat line because it piles onto the fact that they've won 20% of their 10 games. And so that means they haven't seen a win and they haven't seen a win. And they've only had two wins and they haven't seen a win in seven games. Yeah, definitely not on fire. Well-titled tidbit right there. But here we go. Gun round, we're back into it. Molotov die back down mid. I heard you kind of scratching your head when we saw this veto, of course, and that's, that is because Mad Lions, you know, you talk about how bad the stat line is for most sports on Inferno. We just haven't really seen much of Mad Lions at all on this map. Yeah, well, I think as Shush was mentioning in the pregame interview, uh, we haven't really prepared for mouse sports, but uh, he knows Peacemaker is a great coach, so we feel prepared. <laughs> or something along those lines. So maybe he has, he's had a hand in uh, helping them develop Inferno. And it's always interesting to see teams pull out a map that isn't part of their veto. It has to happen at some time, at some point. There's always going to be a match where it looks ridiculous from an analyst perspective, but the team has been uh, in private fixing things, uh, adapting to things, scrimming, and have brought it to a point where they can try and test it. It might not always start off so well, but still, it's important to include maps like Inferno in your playbook. Bubsky's trying to find that timing inside of short. Kerrigan's gonna, gonna uh, decide to pick up the heat here. Charges in, right into the crossfire. That's Shush over towards the pit, and Acor on back bombsite. Look how quickly Mouse Sports, who had the rush, come to a halt because Frozen could very well find timing. He sees Roy with a knife in hand and destroys him for it. Frozen doubling back in to clear out Moto, and he's not gonna win that duel. So Rops is now very much alone. Another clutch for him to try and pick up, but it's shut down. Acor is gonna take the shot, and then most importantly, lands his one bullet. Skewers Rops to the backside of short, and we've got Mad Lions with yet another round. 
Three men up. Yeah, there's just, uh, once again, a lack of ferocity there crossing into the site. Acor should be pushed to the point that he has to take, like, some kind of no-scope shot or hide behind a box to delay, but instead he's able to sit there on the site, not flash blind, not behind a smoke, killing two players from the safety of the site box with teammates around him. So lane is a very difficult part of the map to take, of course. If you don't get the first kill, you know, things can go sour very quickly. So that could have been a, an issue for them. But uh, it, as long as the fight's still going on, you can't let the, you can't run out of flashes and then still try to continue onto the site versus the crossfire. You really have to act on that one moment, pounce on it and, uh, and try to get into the site as quickly as possible. But yeah, that's how she goes sometimes. It, it does feel like most ports right now just are lacking some of the intensity they need to to, to to win some of these trades. Chris J's AK looking for something, looking for one head to pop here versus Mad Lions. And okay, he's got it, but he also falls to 14 HP, doubling back and dying in mid instead. So Mad Lions, five round lead, seven to score. Looking good for them. This was Kerrigan dying first. He decides to run through the Molotov trying to find timing, but Roy is looking rock solid with this A1S. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I don't think Mad Lions have done anything special quite yet. We had a nice pistol round from Mouseports, but since then it's looked extremely flimsy. So it's really on Mouseports to just give them a hard round to win, right? On, on, a, fun, on a fundamental level, stay, stay closer on the spacing, explode into his site when you pick it, their approaches to get to choke points have been great because, you know, Kerrigan and Chris J, that's a, is a high, a huge amount of court IQ to have on your team. And this, the strategy up until the execution is great. The execution looks very flimsy. So hopefully they can, they can sort that out. You know, once again, all the correct pressure being applied. We've got a, a four-man setup on A, unless they put... And it's uh, Mad Lions who are not biting on any of this banana pressure. So nice, nice on them to actually read this so well. Again, though, this is the CTs just finding the terrorists mid-execution. Bubski, dude, he is lucky wow. to be alive. But, you know, he still prioritizes the target, sees that Chris J could very well spot him and doesn't want to die to that. So he quickly gets it. And doesn't try to push the issue either. I mean, I think that uh, Mad Lions aren't going to overextend into the greediness of anything more than a five versus three. They can lock down their crossfires now. Barring any sort of drastic situation here at the B site where the two CTs fall short, they're going to be fine. And Acor, well, he makes it look even more convincing. Falling up that one op kill and then repositioning, calling for his teammates to come over because the little that's left of mass sports is indeed pressuring inwards. Oh. There it is. That's what we're looking for. Hmm. Woxic connecting two quick headshots. That's going to enable the bomb plant for Rocks. He gets himself a third, gunning for the fourth. Astillion, he's going to just try to buy time because he wants to flex this 1v2. He's got his teammate shoulder to shoulder. A little bit more damage here from Woxic, and he still sits on 56, trying to cut off the tail end of it. Shush denies him anything more. Mad Lions, 8 2. Mm, it's too much to ask, huh? The 2v5 looks so doable there. Woxic does a great job covering the smoke, almost grabs that last kill on a Cillian that would have really sealed the deal. Maintained the crossfire on the T side, but couldn't pull it out. Uh, Rops can't help him either. And uh, yeah, Mad Lions uh, end up winning another retake and just another good hold by them. Mouse sports do a lot of work this round. They go for the 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 B control and credit to Mad Lions. The calling right now, it's they're reading the setups really well. When Mouse sports throw all of that utility on Banana, Mad Lions don't move an inch. They don't overstack B with two players. They wait with one. They hold four on A, and that allows one to roam and Bubski to get into the halls and call out their fake mid control as well. Dude, Mad Lions have no respect for mouse ports at this moment. Again, they decide to sprint somebody down middle, catching that alt mid timing for the tease, and then even getting away by falling that player up banana. I love it. That tempered aggression calculated, but can they account for this? Chris J coming in and taking names. His second kill already added to the tally. He tries for the third inside of pit, but Roy comes in to bail him out. And Mad Lions, again, just keeping up the tempo, whether that's running down middle, exiting B, or rotating back over to the A site, nobody slowed down. Zero hesitation. 
I think there's an argument to be made that when things are cloudy for the other team and you guys have been moving quickly, it's a great time to act act fast as well. Don't let them figure things out in the minute 50 whatever in the round that's left when they're getting into their default. Just start to apply pressure while they're still confused about what happened last round and why they may or may not be playing badly. Um, and, and just keep applying pressure as much as possible until they can respond to maintain the confusion on the mouse board side, you know, th these are what timeouts are for. Oh, he's blind, man. Fully blind. And Acor still rocks Frozen's world. B has been an issue. Mad Lions coming out on top of these early aggressions over and over. Whoa. Sometimes you can start off your day just right, do everything properly, and still spill the coffee on your keyboard happens only once though only once wow yeah, yeah. i mean counter in counter strike it can happen it can happen it can happen over and over again uh with with players of this caliber just all of your best plans get stuffed especially with acor opping the way he is i mean you know chris j dying the way he did in alt that kill right there where he's he's flashed for like a full second and a half Kerrigan even delays the peak and gets opt. Oh, Cillian, he's going to play on top of the pallet. A fun position to try and screw around the sides of these smokes, but the op shot comes over the bow and he backs up. Smoke grenade up and over here from Waxic, trying to set the utility for his teammates to run forward. Bomb leads the charge on short. It's a three-man hit, and nobody checks out Astillion. He pops up, Wax back to Bubski clears up shop. Yeah, I think Bye. we've got attack timeout, so we're going to take a, uh, a, a an in-game insights demp a look with uh, Pimp and talk about what we can we figure out what we can learn. Yeah, Bobski's off to one hell of a start for Mad Lions. Let's have a look at it. Look at the confidence he's playing with. Pushing down middle, getting the kill towards Frozen. He's making it very tough for Mouse Sports right now. Fast forwarding a bit. Look at him right here coming again. Coming in from this position, just taking the fights. Not scared of anything. And that's the way Mad Lions is playing right now. Taking on the fights all the time. Fast forwarding a little bit more. He wins the round right here with a nice 4K. Bobski, Mad Lions, all over the place right now. And I, I think that's a really important point, just how ferocious Mad Lions are. Kings of the jungle, and are, are and for Mouse Sports, it's like they're just one step behind constantly. It's like watching Liquid versus MIBR yesterday on this very same map. We've got some of the same elements. Oh, here we have it. Finally, they're able to get those CTs a, a little scared at the top of Banana. Just trying to flex numbers. I think Pimp's insight was dead on. The entirety of Mad Lions just playing with no fear. Looking for the aim duels, looking to kick Mouse Sports while they're down. And the hit comes in. There is a T inside of the CT smoke. Ooh, could start getting awkward. Chris J, that's him. Comes back and finds them turn. Bubski in turn, 16 and six now. He flashes high and just continues to try and maraud his way through their back lines. T's can't even be comfortable enough to try and go for their plant. They're already man disadvantage. Oh. And look what Bubski's done. He's created enough of a distraction for Shush to come in as the insurance policy. Now Karen, Kerrigan's got nowhere to go, nowhere to go oh. except for forward, it seems. Both players on the site, rocking headshots, and <laughs> Rops lands another. Can't stop the Rops, baby. That was a sick scout shot, the CT spawn. Second one. It's just the icing on the cake. Look at this. Crispy, clean. Acor, good night, sir. You had Ooh. the op. I'm not going to lie. I didn't see that coming. I think Kerrigan no, and yeah. Ross pinned in like that. When Shush comes up banana, I thought that was a sealed deal. Definitely. When Kerrigan stopped planting the bomb to jump up and wait for the push, it didn't seem like the push was going to come. They're going to wait that 3v2 out, force a plant, and then rush there while Rops is busy <laughs> dividing his time between two angles. Got a full Suicide screen bomber. chicken. Yeah, that was like a movie shot. The chicken's like running away from the explosion. Oh, peeking off of the balconies. Bubski looking for more. Molly's exchanged over here towards Arch Smoke, too. Uh, oh, Kerrigan, lucky to be alive. He's going to have to. Uh... 
Oh, they're just getting bullied, man. Bubski through the smoke. You know, Kerrigan falls back. Woksvik says, don't worry, I'll take the front line. Poor man gets bombarded, just pummeled by Bubski, who's not showing any signs of slowing down. Total disrespect here as they just pressure their way through Boiler. And then that's going to force Mouse Sports to double back towards B. Acor, are you kidding? Name one player on Mad Lions who's not playing lights out right now. I know. You, yeah, I lose. I lose. You're right. This is, uh, I yeah. I set you up to fail. I think you did, yeah. But uh, it just, it, yeah, it goes to show, and you think about it, and you look at all these players, and you can think of a highlight. Roy on the A site, Shush on the pistols, Bubski on the lurks. <laughs> Everybody is doing their part and playing really well. And, the, and I think that's heavily contrasted by most sports just not playing really well, because if they were, this would just be a more even scoreline and a really great match. But instead, it's just a great match by Mad Lions and most sports made to look like fools. It's nearly 122 ADR on this map already. And he's been playing uh, around mid along with Bubski. And it's crazy because some of this map control, like very decent attempts at map control by Mouse Sports, but Mad Lions are number one, not scared, and number two, trading out almost every single time. The only times the rounds have come close, like the Woxic 2v5, 2k in the B site, Rops with the 4k, they lose the round, the 1v1 on A site. There we have it, something, something to play off of. But there's still a landmine in the form of Acor. He's back behind the car, comes in with the Deagle, just looking to stay alive, but Chris J's gonna triple up on the play already. He gets clotheslined by Bubski, who's, oh my goodness, just playing lights out. Again, no fear CS. Doesn't matter if he has to sprint from the other side of the maps, he sets up his... We're back with the second half. And oh, how the odds have shifted. Mad Lions, hell of a start. We had that great stat brought up by Elliot uh, during our first tactical pause that said, you know, seven losses in a row for Mouse Sports on Inferno, three of which I believe were five or less rounds. Well, it looks like four of which may be five or less rounds, unless they can pick up this pistol. And they are playing against utility. Or rather, with utility, excuse me. Not a single armored player for Mouse Sports in this pistol. Yeah, that's awesome. I'd love to. I'd love to see this work out. I actually want to know what this round is going to look like. Walks has a kit. They've got five HE grenades to make them all yeah. kind of very easily killable. CZs also can come in, come in huge, not needing to get headshots. Please, you just it all starts with the well well placed grenades. Please, most sports, give us the carpet bomb. Five frags, five kills. I'd pay money for that. Oh my god, I guess two nades is enough. Kerrigan's big brain blown away. Now frozen in the back of the bomb site's gonna get pressured by the numbers here from Mad Lions. They've got their bomb coming over and Acor wastes no time. Two frags are better than five. <laughs> Okay, the round's not over, but I did not expect that at all. I can't believe it's it, I can't believe Mouse Sports got naded to death when they bought the five irony. That's so that's so amazing. Maybe balance. Maybe balance is the answer. Yeah, there's a flank coming in here too. So unfortunately for Mouse Sports, they've got all their heads turned forward. Shush arrives in uh -oh. time, but uh, a little bit delayed. Still gets it done. The first two kills are his. Now Woxic, he has responded with both a frag grenade kill and then that pistol follow-up dealing with the flank. So his eyes fall forward and his feet move there too, trying to figure out where the hell they've gotten off to, whipping around with the crosshair, but he will be dropped. A 10-round disadvantage to the favor of Mad Lions. This is a masterclass on Inferno. Appreciate this. This is just hilarious. You know, Kerrigan dies with a nade kit. He wanted to even drop the smoke and it landed at his feet. Smoke CT for them instead and allowed Mad Lions to entry into the site. I mean, amazing round for Mad Lions, but hilarious that uh, Mouse Sports are the ones who sacrificed all of their armor just to be able to pull off a kill like that. We're gonna get the utility exchange over here on Banana. Looks like Mouse Sports are wanting to try and play to a faster pace. Not gonna work out for them. Bubski cuts down two. He is 22 and nine, 17 rounds deep. Yeah, quietly, right? I mean, him and he, he was working A there with a Cillian who was doing incredibly well, who also has just a ton of, okay, ton of ADR. And, uh, and yeah, they were, I mean, I didn't even really notice Bubski had that many kills. Yeah. He's working on it. Rob's killer headshot. Rob's has been the consistency for most sports this morning, afternoon, evening. And their last Time series. Is... 
you know you know they they it, you can't really carry to a loss but Rops was the only one with a reasonable rating at the end of their last series looking to save i suppose gets his hands on the galil scout still for Waxic. 14th round in the bag for mad lions of course this is their map choice and despite having only played it twice in the last few months I think Mad Lions may fall here more often. At least Bubsky seems to be a, a, a proponent for it. Mm -hmm. 14 and three, as we said. But uh, listen, folks, trains up next. If this one finishes too quick for your likings, there's still plenty of Counter-Strike for you to digest. It's honestly pretty shocking that a team with Kerrigan on it can be bad at Inferno. You know, it's especially in a, in a world where Kerrigan has had like the strongest vetoes because he believes in playing all maps. To not play Inferno of all maps seems strange and to not be good at it. Um, it's not like they don't have the talent to do it or the in-game IQ. They've got Chris J and Kerrigan on the team. So it's it's pretty strange, but yeah, and it, nothing warrants a scoreline like this versus a team that's not in their tier. I mean, technically, Mad Lions right now are uh, it's a pimp on Pimp's official uh, Danish rating, second best team in Denmark. But that's Pimp's words. Ooh. Bobski gets that first kill. Frozen kind of alone on the uh, further corner of Banana. Kerrigan's back towards the coffins. He throws his Molotov and Bubski actually skates right through it. Now some utility from the T's being thrown as well. Kerrigan, he hasn't spotted anything, so caught by surprise by Bubski, who's just playing timings. Playing entirely alone, other than that ruse created by the delayed utility. There's no real reason Kerrigan could have expected Bubski to have been that far forward already. So Rops is not helped out by the initial B players at all. The bomb is planted and they are gonna have to just limp away from this. They are giving up a 15th round when they only have three. Nothing hurts more. That is actually the worst feeling. This is the Counter-Strike equivalent of a kick in the nuts. Yeah, I was thinking kick in the shins, but yeah, both suck. Both really suck. You know what I really hate? Those super big uh, bed frames that they stick out farther than the mattress that you have in hotel rooms, so you always end up turning off the lights and banging your shins on them and getting into bed. That's what, that's probably what it felt like for most parts to have to leave on uh, on that round and hear this sound, this Madden Point music every single round now for the rest of the match. It's a rough roller coaster here on Inferno. Bubski, the conductor for Mad Lions. He's having a field day. He's right in that front seat, hands up, having a hell of a time. But uh, hey, they still have a chance. No sports at least with a gun round to, to uh, try and fend off the scoreline with. Maybe get this one at least in the realm of a more respectable score. Frag Grenade's going to do a good job at softening up both Frozen and Kerrigan. So these poor B players have just been bullied from the get-go of the second half. These rounds might just be for dignity, but we'll see if they can at least get some of that. They've uh, they still got Mad Lions hot on their heels on Banana. Look at this. This is a round where they rotate out to A because they're assuming Mad Lions are not going to commit hard to it, but they've still got four here on Banana looking to get in. Frozen on the site. This is definitely a gamble. Frozen's down to 43 health alone with the Falmus, and he doesn't have any incendiary. Ooh, it's been a rough day in the office at this B bomb site, and it's not going to get any easier. Unless Mad Lions feel a threat, but with the commitment to the utility, you know they're inbound. Frozen now from the top rope, able to get the first one. A success story versus Bubsky. That's going to be great for Mouse Sports because Rops comes flying through the smoke. That's what they needed. Some sort of a shutdown. At least that first kill to enable Mouse Sports to get into position. And even Woxic locks down the line over at the A site. So unless Acor is going to 1v5 in 20 seconds, of which I wouldn't bet my money, we have Mouse Sports with a fourth round. Only 11 to go. <laughs> he just saw someone cross into... Uh... Under, oh wow, he saw, he saw his feet on his screen <laughs> and Woxic was just listening the whole time, expecting to be cleared probably. So yeah, it's a nice round for mouse boards and uh, this push through CT spawns, very common one. It's an emergency rotate to help out your first Origins player who when he drops off can't really fall back to too many other locations. 
Uh, so they need they made the play they had to make, and Mad Lions did the exact same thing to them in the first half. It's common for it to work with a proper with a proper flash and the right timing. So, but the scary part is again that Mad Lions call out the rotate per or the call out the setup perfectly. Rocks. Nicely done. Oh. Aggression inside of Boiler works out perfectly. Mad Lions trying something different, getting up into the apps and not expecting to be pushed back that fast. Acorn and Asylian, two versus five. At this point, they still have mouse ports by the neck, so squeeze a little, get a couple of kills here, and they'll be gasping for air even if they win the round and try and bounce back in the next. Yeah, it's true. Whatever you can get. Do the boost onto the, oh, they've got an arch player to, oh, Asylian gets the kill, even as the guy, okay, Acorn, where's the HNS, my friend? Ends up dropping the jump. Yep. It's quaffed two it. Two on four situation. Yeah, quaffed it. Rob's low. Ooh, Rob's blind. They get pick control. Ooh, but he walks right into Kerrigan. And then another. Kerrigan. Looking better, my friend. Five kills. <laughs> After those two, five rounds as well. Yeah, it's a big increase. What amazing shots here. He had to readjust for that second kill. Let go of left click. Gave himself enough time for the recoil to reset. It landed the headshot. Ten rounds to go here for most sports. It's one going to be one hell of a climb. They've at least got a safe to go off the back of. Had the economy for what it's worth. You know, I want to appreciate Kerrigan in that last moment. It's, it's a small tidbit. It's just those two closing kills. But I, I think it, it, it says something about just his initiative as a player. Notice where he gets those frags from uh, in the end at that Galil stage. We saw the player slip into Little Pit. You and I are both thinking maybe there's a chance here. But he throws himself into a dangerous spot. Oh, hold on. <laughs> just to get the job done. You know, he made sure that nothing else could come to fruition for Mad Lions. He was going to be the first person to die, but it was going to ensure their win. However, we've got something bigger to talk about. That's Bubski and Astillion, each with a deagle kill to get this round opened. 16-5, very real, unless the CTs can manage this retake. Bubski just on the other side of the smoke. It's all on Woxic. 